Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at Black Box. Now, we're diving into the world of macro pads. Um, I have used a open source macro pad for a while. I think it's open source. It's PS17 by Atlantis. It's just a, um, it's an acrylic uh, layered, you know, acrylic, uh, acrylic plates layered with a knob, just a regular numpad, pad, though it is uh, programmable with VIA. Since then, I have continued to further dive into it. I've also acquired uh, this one, which is the uh, RPI 2040. It, it's using the Raspberry Pi MCU, and I do have a 3D printed case on here. As I further dived into it, um, I did acquire a couple of Doyo, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, D-O-I-O, -O, macro pads. Now, all of these are VIA compatible, so you can program them to basically do whatever you want. Now, I have set this one up. It is my video editing workstation, and it basically allows me to jump along the timeline, scrub, or jump to certain keyframes or um, cuts within the timeline as well as jumping up and down between the tracks. It has increased my productivity roughly 10%, maybe even a little bit more, but just from the, from when I first programmed it, it got, it took me a little while to get used to it. I kept using keyboard shortcuts, but now that I have the shortcuts already programmed into here, um, I can hold the button and turn to go all the way to the beginning, hold the button and turn the other way, go all the way to the end, just click through to the different cuts in my timeline and as well jump to key markers so it though at first took a little getting used to now it's like if I don't see my macro bad I'm like how am I gonna edit this video so I become quite used to it now this one I just have um, connected to a workstation I don't use that often and basically that closes the browser this opens the browser um, whichever browser is set as the default browser in that machine and these I interchange for different shortcuts, like to websites like Reddit and my YouTube channel. So it's kind of, mm, it's not really, I mean, I could get by without it, but I like being able to just sit down on my computer and, boop, and then turn around, do something else and look back and see that, you know, the browser has been open to this particular website. So today we're taking another, a look at another one in the, the family of DOIO or D-O-I-O macro pads this one was sent to me by what geek um, they were kind enough to provide this for my review it's our first endeavor into working with each other and um, they were kind enough to I mean they, they select this which I, I really do like when I'm working with uh, either manufacturers or stores I prefer that they pick something to send to me uh, so that they can give me something that they think is representative of you know who they are and what they're selling and what products they they hold in high esteem. So they chose this and I was like, oh yeah, I have seen this one before and it has interested me because, well, there's two things I wanna use it for. One is for my IDE, uh, my development environment. Now, I run a couple of different IDEs depending on what I'm working on, uh, Sublime and VS Code, but my primary IDE are JetBrains IDE. So a lot of their key bindings is extremely the same across their different, because they have uh, PyCharm for Python. Um, they have uh, Writer, which is for .NET. They have WebStorm, which is for JavaScript, Node.js in general. But what I plan to do with this, and I'm probably, not probably, I know I'll be coming back to this one once I have it programmed to give you guys an example of how it's the real world use of this, but I didn't want to really take it out and use it yet until I got a chance to review it. And I had between being sick and missing a few days and just some other stuff that I had to get taken care of. I didn't get to this as soon as I wanted to. So I'm just doing my unboxing now because I, if somebody sends me something, 
I actually prefer to do the review, and even if I purchase something, I prefer, if I plan to review it, I, I, I enjoy reviewing it straight out of the box. I may do some cuts and go use it for a little while and then add, you know, more in my closing thoughts. But when I first do the unboxing, I like to do a kind of like, hey, I'm getting to meet this at the same time you are. I think that it allows me to, you know, say unencumbered just my thoughts off the top of my head. Uh, they're not always, you know, right, and I try to correct myself if I make any assumptions or mistakes along the way. But I feel that it's best for me to introduce it as someone who, you know, doesn't know it because, yes, I've taken a look at the pictures and everything, and I've taken it out just to make sure it arrived in safe condition, but I packed it right back up because I don't get to play with it until I've actually done the review and I've shared with my wonderful viewers, you know, what I think of it. And I mean, somebody asked me not too long ago, why don't you tell me which keyboard I should buy? And I'm sorry, but I'm never going to do that. I really, I don't feel I have the right, the permission, uh, any authority to tell anyone else how to spend their money. That's just not, it's not in my bag and I just don't feel that it's right. So I, I will say I would buy this over that and I wouldn't buy that or I would buy this because I'm placing myself in the situation and I can answer that honestly because it's my money and I can say, hey, yeah, I would spend my money on this or I wouldn't spend my money on that. But I never dare to say, you know, you need to buy this or you need to not buy this. Um, I will give my reasons why I don't buy a particular product or why I won't buy any more products from them like... I mean, I made my Akko PSA video, which has gotten a lot of views. And I mean, yes, it's controversial because some people have had a good experience with Akko. And I'm glad. So the macro pad that we're taking a look at today is the Doyo KB30-01. It's a 30 key plus three knob macro pad. Now it is VIA compatible and it does come stock with some switches with the Otemu Ocean Silent Linear, which are some switches that I haven't tried yet. Now it does retail for $127.99, so this is going to be, I think, a little bit more specific to people that you know are working on the computer, whether it be code, video editing, music editing. I think this is going to help because I know, like I said, I'm going to adopt this not only to my video editing. Um, I'm thinking of doing one layer for video editing, one layer for GIMP or Photoshop, whichever you want to call it. Um, and one layer for uh, my IDE. Maybe a couple layers. Maybe I'll do one layer for Sublime and VS Code and then one layer for JetBrains. But I, did, I didn't I did get to choose the color, but this is the color that I would have picked it in. Um, actually, it is a nice hot yellow. So here is the macro pad. And as you can see, we have um, some stabilized keys as for regular I mean we can actually set this up as a regular number pad and it's going to basically be your number pad and here you basically got a navigation column with some extra keys and some arrows and you have your three knobs as well as the screen which I believe if I'm not mistaken the screen does allow you to or it shows you which layer you're on so all right we've got a cable and we have a key switch puller that if you have seen this before it usually comes in a CIY in the latest revision so I wonder if CIY has anything to do with this key with keyboard it almost is a keyboard at 30 keys I mean like a 25 30 <laughs> percent now from the construction we see the top is appears to be a CNC aluminum don't think that it's a poured aluminum and we have three different entry points so that you can select where you want your USB-C cord to go, you know, in order for, because I mean, this is a you know, decent size macro pad and it's gonna take up some desk space. So if it's gonna take up some desk space, it might as well be useful. But being able, I, I really kind of wish they would have included a, uh, either an elbow end or an elbow connector, because I think that this is going, for me, I'm going to use a, a elbow connector so that I can put it near the back, but I could slide it down when I need to use it. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it has as far as, because I do believe it has shine down lights like the other ones do. But 
these multiple ports are always very interesting. All right, so we have it boot up. Looks like we've got a red. Let me see. All right, so pressing it takes me through the layers. Pressing the right one. All right. All right, this is already connected to volume. Now it doesn't, this one doesn't press, these do. This one just gives me a nope. All right, so it doesn't look like the knobs are programmed for the different layers. I gotta say, I like that. And so we've got, looks like we've got four layers. So I can know which layer I'm on at the moment, which honestly, be nice to have that indicator, even if it's like hitting a couple of keys and it lights up a particular number on your um, on your number row to say, hey, to say, hey, this is what uh, what row I'm in. Now, granted, in QMK that can be done, but it's not something that's out of the box. You'd have to program the method. Now, like I said, this this one does come preloaded with Otemu Ocean Silent switches, and I have not had a chance to play with these before. And don't get me wrong, I mean, the, the Otemu Silence aren't awful, and I mean, if you really need silence at a budget, um, okay, but they, they feel a little too organic, like, the only way that I can describe it is, to me, they feel kind of like you're squishing a bug. Um, so, well, I am a fan of silent switches, I I guess I just haven't found anything that beats out either the Boba Gama or the U4. Those are both, uh, I mean, the U4 is a tactile silent switch, though Though it's still, it's silent, but though it still delivers a deep tone, but it's it's quiet, it's not loud and in your face, while the uh, the Boba Gama is just silent. <laughs> and uh, it was actually one of the first, like, real switches that I bought, and I, I, I was, I was, I went from clicky to silent, to linear, to tactile. And who knows what I'll be next week. So as we can see, this is a south facing um, configuration here. And I mean, I gotta say, it's nice. Now, there's gotta be a way to change colors. I'm gonna go ahead and open up VIA and see what the default configurations of this is. All right, so it doesn't see the device and it kind of turned on in a weird mode. Is it? Hmm. Are these ports different? See, it did not come with an extension manual. I don't know if you noticed that, but when I plugged it into the far left, it looks like only the numpad came up. Well, actually the numpad and this, there's no lights under here and there's no screen. So what happens if we plug it into the far left? Do we only get the knobs on the screen? That is odd. All right, I was not aware of that. Different functionality. All right, so let's plug it in the middle. Let's see what we got. All right, we got the doyo. Now, do we see the device? Yeah, QMK Builder Doyo Connect. All right, looks like we're gonna have to download the VIA files. And they have it, uh, what geek has it at the bottom of their listing um, with the executable for both Windows and Mac. As many of you guys that use VIA will know, um, VIA is now web-based, so it's not that much of a issue anymore as far as uh, binaries go. Obviously, you can still build the binary from source or download it, but it's just much easier to use the um, the web browser because you just well, it doesn't matter. Whatever you may be working in. All right, so once we authorize the device and we've downloaded the VIA files, we just go and load up the VIA files. Downloads. JSON. All right, it looks like we have to have uh, used V2 definitions in order for it to work. All right, and then it comes up. So it looks like LT3. This is volume up and down. And it looks like two buttons, so it's basically right and left. This is a tap modifier. 
but I don't actually see a modifier modifier. This is numlot. And these are print, scroll, pause, insert home page up, delete and page down. These are your arrows. Oh, I guess I did tap. There we go. That's how we change. So let's see what layer one says. Huh. This is saying that this is layer four. Oh, I am on layer four. Ha 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 ha. So layer four, we can control. This is the RGB. All right, so this is RGB effects, it seems to be. You can scroll through the RGB effects. And we have brightness on the left and right. We have another RGB. That looks like the saturation. Oh, no, this is saturation, sorry. And this is hue. So let's find a single color here. There's a single color, so we can find our perfect hue and saturation. I'm gonna leave it at that yellow for right now. Now, what a geek! What? What geek? I don't know why I want to keep saying what a geek. Maybe because I'm what a geek am I? <laughs> What Geek did send me out um, some tea caps to put on here, but as my wife said when I pulled it out, I was like, I'm doing a review of this one today. These are the key caps they sent. And I threw the bag at her. She's like, they're cheap. They sound cheap. <laughs> she didn't even need to. So we're not doing a review with these key caps. I just, I mean, I know it's got shine through and everything, but I don't want to. I think this is too nice to put that on there, to be quite honest. Let me, uh, oh. all right, switch it back to layer one. Got our volume. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to reprogram this because like I said, this seems to be a tap modifier and it just switches you through the layers. And the rest of this is just basically programmed like a keyboard that delete and, and page down or right here. I mean, it's basically the navigation column that you'd have on a TKL or cluster, I would say, with the arrow keys here. And the rest of this is program like. So, I mean, you could, if you're using a 60% and you need a numpad, this could be it. Not only is it going to give you the arrows, it's going to give you the, the, the navigation cluster and it's going to give you the numpad in case you need it. Now this, like I said, this does retail for $127, so there's going to be, you know, it's a particular set of people that I think are going to be more interested in this than not. I Obviously, I don't believe this is, you know, anyone's going to make this their full-time keyboard, though, from what I've seen of some of those gaming half keyboards, this might actually work. Although I've seen most of them be left-handed for some reason, though I have that left-handed side, but obviously we can, you know, use these, program WASD in there. There's literally a world of possibilities but to go ahead and give these guys keycaps today i was like why don't i take and use the akko white on black asa keycap set so i'm gonna go ahead and just for right now Just taking a look at it stock like i said i do plan to come back to this in uh in the future once i have it uh fully programmed to do you know some screen video so i can show you guys how i set it up now granted everybody is probably going to set it up a little bit different but i plan to change all of these i may even use some 3d printed caps i've had good luck with 3d printing basically DSA profile caps and then printing either a legend or a symbol and keep pressing it on there. And basically the the symbol or the legend is basically like three layers thick on the 3D printer. So it's just slightly, th it's probably about as thick as like four or five sheets of paper 
you know, together, so it's not necessarily thick. I mean, it's one tenth of a millimeter, if that. But I can put it on top of the keycap, put just a little bit of, of glue to hold it in place where I want it, and then put a, um, a piece of cloth over it and use a hair dryer or a hair straightener. Which uh, thankfully I have daughters, so there's a few that they don't use anymore. That this is, doesn't get hot enough for them to do what they need with their hair, but it does get hot enough to where I can actually press that symbol and I. I know I have some around here, but I don't know where. So I'll, I'll show those off, and I probably will make some custom legends so that I can tell what they are. And then I have my own keycap set. Although I do have a couple of ortho sets, which might actually give me what I need for this. I mean, because granted, I could just use letters and just know, hey, this does this, does this, this does that. But I, I really just love the fact that this has the layers, a display layer. I mean. It's too small, really, to do anything else. I mean, you're not going to be typing on it, so there's no reason to do, you know, any sort of uh, word. I mean, I guess you could do your words permitted in there. But from what I know, I believe the screen is not uh, customizable. Let me confirm that for sure, though. So, yeah, so it's an aluminum top, and it's an acrylic bottom. As you can see, there's the lights that match um it looks like a really nice pcb but that's what i've seen from these as well um they're quite well manufactured uh, this little guy <laughs> i hate to say it but i've dropped it a few times it's got an air scratch on it but it also like i said has the downward facing leds and it's just i love this guy it's a cute little guy you got a little ring color around there this one um I think this one is a little bit more, uh, I don't know, the big buttons for me just says put some stickers on it and set it up for like your kids that are little so that, you know, one's the browser, one's their game, one's YouTube, you know, whatever things they do the most often, like log, you know, open up Netflix and log into it under their profile, one button, and just have a little Netflix sticker on top of that key, bam. So this one is more a simple, simplistic one, um, but I think that the big buttons make it kind of cool. And like I said, I will follow up this video with something more detailed going into Vi and everything. But like I said, I just got it and now I've got to, it's going to take me a little while to set it up. But like I said, I will follow up and show more. I'll include the Vi screens while I'm doing this and show how I work inside of each of the different operating systems. This this is going to not be volume anymore. That's what it defaults to. This is gonna be my scrubber. I love having, actually I bought a knob and I thought I had enough clearance on it because it's, it's a bigger round, I think it's a 28 millimeter round knob that I was planning to use on, which one was I gonna put it on? I forgot what, I think it was the key cron, one of the key crons of the knob. And I wanted to put it on there and it was just like two millimeters too big. It just did not go, but it has this little indent and I love that. I, it just, it's fun. And it has, this does have that slight little clicking at each different um, spot. So, you know, you can be very precise, go to the next spots. You know, I could probably set this for I don't know, five second, 15 second, 30 second jumps in my timeline so I can scrub easily and be like, all right, I need to get a minute ahead, you know? And if I have it at 15, one, two, three, four, all right, boom, I've gotten there. Uh, like I said, as a default, this is set as volume up and down. Previous, oh wait, this is previous, next, next, previous, and play for, to press down. And this one is page up, page down, or page down, page up, and then changing the layers. The rest of these are programmed as the keys that I've put in there. So, my opinion, this, this is, like I said, this is probably gonna be very attractive to a select group of users for the select few people or the select group of people that would be interested in this. You've got a, a great build quality. Um, you have some pretty decent light effects. You have via programmability, so it doesn't matter what operating system you're using, whether it be Mac, Linux, Windows, 
um, you're going to be able to use this and program it without having to worry, hey, why can't I program it? Or I have to go over to this workstation that's got Windows or I have to spin up my virtual machine. And don't get me wrong, virtual machines for the most part do work with VIA and you know helping if you know what you're doing and you're actually you know passing the port through to where the virtual machine has exclusive access to that port. Um, obviously you gotta know which port is associated with what. When you're talking about USB hubs, you're not gonna be able to control one port on the hub. You'll be able to control the hub, the, the port on your computer, and all three of those ports, you know, or however many are plugged into that USB hub, are going to be, you know, exclusively accessed by that guest computer. All right, so yeah, that's got me a little perplexed because usually, like on the MK870, you got a USB port on the back and on either side, but they all just basically just work the same. Now, are those hub ports? I mean. I wonder, where is it, USB-C, USB-C cable, oh man, I just have one around here somewhere, so let's plug this in here, and then let's plug this in here, ah. yep, yeah, it's acting like a hub, okay, so that's what that does, now that is pretty interesting, I gotta say. Um, now it's only USB-C, but there's plenty of USB-C to USB-A adapters in case you want to hook up your mount your mouse into here. Been having a little hub off of it. Now it should be labeled here that this is primary and these are hub ports. But I gotta say that is pretty cool. Yeah. Now wow. Uh, I gotta say I don't like that. I will like it. Yep, I can see I can authorize either one of the keyboards just by hitting the refresh on use via and it asks me which one to authorize. The only thing that I'll say that I mean this this particular layout may actually be more southpaw friendly because I mean if you notice usually this is over here and the Mac or the numpad is over there. So now, like I said, I personally am going to be using it to where this will probably remain enter. That may actually become delete. Uh, these are going to become shortcuts, different you know functions. Some will be macros. I probably will reserve these for macros. So again, um, I, I it would have been nice had they included a um, a manual. But like I said, I really only I, I brushed through the uh, description and I I basically just you know I got you know it's via and it's 30 keys and it's got well a rotator knob and two potentiator meter knobs I mean they're all really potentiator meters uh, or uh, potentiometer I can never say that word right three knobs and 30 keys right I like it and I am going to use this uh, once I have this set up to use the um, key combos that I'm used to, it's going to increase my productivity. The one thing I think would have been cool, and I think it would have been worthwhile even paying a little bit more, that this actually came with Relegendable keycaps. I don't know if you guys have seen Relegendable keycaps, or basically, I think they come in OEM only, that I've seen, but they basically, they have a plastic clear top on the top of it that you could pop off and you could it usually comes with some pre-built um, legends but you can print up your own on a piece of paper put it on top put the plastic cap in you're good to go so no 3d printer needed it's really just the caps this with some shine through you know like basically either do like a circle in the middle or I don't know but somehow you know it shines through even the whole keycap whatever but to have you know to where you can print up in your own color paper or you know your own logo whatever but you can actually you know pick this up if this came with that i would pay 150 bucks for it without without issue because that way i don't have to go and 3d print my own caps i don't have to make my own legends i mean i could probably i guess now thinking about it, i guess i could print up some rough uh re 
was because it basically would just be the key cap and something that's a little bit bigger that snaps onto it down at the bottom and has enough space, you know, to hold a piece of paper to where it won't slide around. But re-legendable key caps on this, I think, would make a productivity increase for many folks out there from software development to video production and anything and everything in between. So I personally like this and I will be using it. I will be coming back to it. I really don't think it needs any mods. And I actually, I gotta say, I don't mind the use of the silence. I mean, it's not, it's not too bad, but I guarantee you, I'm either gonna stretch them out with some U4s or U4Ts. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, Switch is obviously it's hot swap, so it doesn't matter what we do. And um, I don't like using that keycap for keys. Keycap for look. But again, we have you know five pin hot swap compatibility, and we have south facing LEDs. So even if you have the older switches, you're not going to have any interference if you use cherry keycaps. All right, so, like I said, I, I got more planned for this. I wanted to at least get the initial unboxing out and get my initial impressions. And like I said, I thought those extra two USB-C ports were just different way, different places where you could power it in. But the fact that it is a um, USB hub and allows, you know, these keys to work continuously through it, that's a... That's a big plus for me. Um, I I don't know if many people are like me, but I'm always running out of USB ports. There's so many USB devices, and sometimes I have. I've loaded up uh, a laptop especially. I mean, when you have a, a, a desktop, it's one thing when you run out of USB ports on the back. Although, nowadays, they really come with a good amount of ports. For me, this is going to be an extremely useful macro pad, and I will be coming back to it uh, with segments, I'll probably do some shorts, but once I have it set up, I'll go through and show you all my different work environments from video to graphic editing to video editing and show you how, you know, this is the way I did it before, this is the way I do it with this macro pad. Now, I, thankfully, I'm, I primarily uh, have basically just repurposed my PS17 Atlas, uh, or Atlantis macro pad to change layers. And though it's useful, it's still small and I still kind of have to look at it. With this one, I may be able to eventually just, you know, be able to touch type and know where everything is. I'm still gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna set it up. I had to cram a lot of different functions into the macro pad or the numpad I'm using right now. And sometimes I get flipped up on which layers that particular function is. But on this one, I know which layer I'm at and I can easily switch to it. I like that. I did want to mention what a geek again. They sent this out to me. This is the first time that we've done a collaboration. Um, I did mean to get to it sooner, but things just came up. I do appreciate them sending me. I appreciate any time a company is willing to work with me. Um, I'm not going to work with any company that says, hey, we want to edit or view your video before you post it or we want you to say you know, specific things that I know go against what I'm actually finding. I mean, sometimes they're just like, hey, make sure to include the link. Well, of course, I'm going to include the link. You sent it to me and, you know, somebody's interested, here's the link. Uh, so as long as they're not asking for anything as far as editorial, um, you know, it's a good relationship. I get to try something that I may have otherwise not had a chance to fit into my budget and they get a little bit of exposure for the product they're selling. And hopefully, you know, because I'm always honest, but hopefully I can, you know, help highlight products that some viewers would be like, hey, I think I like that because this, this, and that. And hopefully, I try to be as, as detailed as possible. Let's get technical. Today we're taking a look at the DOIO KB30-01. It is a 30 key, four layer, layer via micropad. It MSRPs for $127.99 on whatgeek.com. It weighs in at 655 grams, 
with its loaded Otemu Ocean silent linear switches. It is 5-pin hot swap compatible with south-facing LEDs. The chin of this macro pad sits at 22 millimeters and the back sits at 31 millimeters providing an angle of 7 degrees. It is made with an anodized aluminum top and an acrylic bottom. It also includes two extra USB-C ports that act as a hub. My point was that I tried to cover information others may not. Like I said, I'm going to be coming back to it and I'm going to be using it to its max. I'm going to be pushing the limit on it. I will be hunting though for the QFK source to see if I can find it because I'd really like to turn on um, the RGB controls in the buy -in. And if I do that, I'll be sharing it you know, in future videos. So anyway, if you guys have any questions for me the next time that I come into it, if you, you know, you're interested and you'd like to know if it does A, B, or C, leave your questions down in the comments below. I'll do my best to either answer directly, do a short, or include it in my next video of this. Again, this is the Megalodon D-O-I-O Doyo. I don't know if I'm saying that right. A Doyo uh, 30. Doyo KB30-01 macro keyboard, 30 keys plus three knobs. So 30 keys, three knobs. It um, has RGB, plenty of RGB effects. It has two USB-C um, hub ports so that you can connect, you know, whether it's your mouse dongle, another macro pad, your keyboard, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, if you only have one port open uh, and you go into your keyboard, well, that's it. Well, you can go into here and then use a USB-C to USB-C cable to go to your keyboard. You're good to go. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Again, if you guys have any questions, let me know because I will be coming back to this. But until next transmission, as always, keep calm and keyboard on.